we need poetry and we need stories that reflect how we live and that's what drives me. But I also know that we couldn't live the way we do without engineers and the city of Newcastle has a proud history of engineering. The person I'm meeting today was inspired to continue this great tradition. Chi Onwara is an MP, an electrical engineer and a lifelong Newcastle United fan. Her love of engineering started here, in Newcastle's Discovery Museum. Tell me what this ship means to you, because to me it's just a big ship. <laughs> to you it's something more than that, isn't it? Well, yes. When I was a kid, my mother would take us to the Science Museum and I'd see this ship. It was just such a work of beautiful engineering and the fastest ship in the world at the time it was built, but also powerful and useful. It wasn't beautiful and useless, it was useful, I guess. And it was from Newcastle, you know, and, you know, that really did inspire me. When I was a little boy, going around the park with a little girl, I would have been, like, freaked out if she looked at the ship and went, well, isn't that beautiful, a, piece, a beautiful piece of engineering? I mean, what did other kids around you think at the time? Let's remember, our, we were the only black family on a large working class council, white council estate. Right. I was bizarre anyway. Right. So the fact that I liked engines and science and maths, right. um, the friends that I had, you know, took me for what I was. Right. They had to. And as a, as a kid, did you think in the future, I want to go into engineering or did you just like it as a hobby? I think really early on, maybe seven, eight or nine, I wanted to be an engineer or a scientist because, you know, there was never any doubt that I was going to have to earn my living, you know, we had no money. And if you're going to earn your living, I wanted to do something that inspired me. So what happened after comprehensive school? Did you go to university? Yes, I went to Imperial to study um, electrical engineering. And that was a bit of a culture shock because I had to move down south and it was very white, it was very male, it was very public school. Whilst I wasn't designing beautiful objects like this, I was learning how to be an engineer. Telecommunications, that was my speciality. I mean, this is something which I think is absolutely gorgeous still to this day. I mean, you could put that on your mantelpiece, couldn't you? You really see beauty in that? <laughs> I do. I think its form is, is fantastic. And look at those rivets. Give me an example of something that you've done that is working that's out there now. Well, I mean, it's a bit of a confession, but I actually have... A, I've kept one of the first circuit boards that I designed myself and had manufactured. And what that did was to manage 32 telephone calls at one time on this piece of A4 circuit. And I'm really proud of that. That was like the sort of the turbinia of telecommunications at the time, because it was all cutting edge. But now, you know, now on the same size board, you could probably get one and a half thousand telephone right. co conversations on that board. So it's great to see how things have moved on. Why do you think there's not more people from the ethnic minorities and black people involved in the science and engineering? I think it's something to do with um, the fact that there aren't black and minority ethnic engineers and scientists visible, so you don't get children being inspired. Um, it's something to do also with the fact that, you know, there aren't more black and minority ethnic physics and maths teachers. And um, it isn't a cool thing to do, which is why, you know, we need poets and filmmakers and the media as well to say engineering and science is great. Say, I, I, re I want it to be like you. You are my hero. <laughs> is, is there a chance for me or do I just forget it? I don't believe it's ever too late. You don't have to have your A-levels. You can start, if you like, from the very beginning. You know, for me, the very beginning is one plus one equals two. If you can understand that, you can go forward step by step to learn the skills, you know, you need to have a, a role in engineering and science. Engineering is absolutely everywhere. It's understanding the world about you, how it works and being able to, you know, to make a difference. <laughs>